Meet Stacy. Stacy's on the hunt for a new pair of trendy glasses. Call me picky, but I just can't find the one. Luckily for Stacy, Walmart Vision has virtual try on. Now she can try on hundreds of frames virtually, then upload her prescription and get new glasses delivered right to her door. Really? <laughs> yeah, really. Well, the hunt just took a turn for the better. Buy your next pair of glasses with virtual try on from Walmart. Welcome to Easy Eye Care. Welcome to your Walmart. Restrictions apply. See walmart.com for details. Have you found the keys to unlock your best trip? On a Trafalgar tour, you unlock more than just the world. We give you the key to let down your walls and make lifelong friends. The key to discovering hidden talents and fresh perspectives. From one-of-a-kind experiences to iconic destinations, Trafalgar gives you the keys to unlock your best self. Discover more at trafalgar.com slash unlock. That's T-R-A-F-A-L-G-A-R dot com slash unlock. Tour differently. Hi there, I am Johnny Lieberman. And I'm Ed Lowe. And we are coming to you from Motor Trend with our new podcast, The Inevitable, back for another season. We have a great group of guests for you this time out, including the one and only Mr. Smoking Tire, Matt Farah. The middle linebacker from the Minnesota Vikings, Eric Kendricks. With the father and son team behind the craziest new hypercar to hit the market, Kevin and Luke Zinger. As well as one of the world's first EV tuners, John Peck from T Sportline. We've got a couple of award winning chefs between these two gentlemen. They have two Michelin stars. Michael Simmerski has two. Sang Young has zero, but they're in here as guests. And comedian extraordinaire, Gabriel Iglesias. Who you might know better as Fluffy. And we got all these guests and more on this season of motor trends the inevitable and you can listen to us on podcast one wherever you get your podcast or choose to watch us on youtube all right matt what are we talking about in this show oh we're going to get into the aston martin dbx 707 a little bit Mm -hmm. and uh and then we're going to bring in our friend ryan from velocity invitational a really cool event coming up in october at laguna seca we'll get you all caught up on that and more First, there's Geico. Would you love to save some money on your insurance? Of course you would. And who doesn't love a deal? When it comes to great rates on insurance for everything, Geico can help. Insurance for your car, truck, motorcycle, boat, RV, even your homeowners, condo, or renter's insurance. They are all covered with Geico. Save even more with special discounts when you bundle coverages together. Plus, they have an easy-to-use Geico mobile app. And 24-7 roadside assistance, so it's easy to switch to GEICO. It's a no-brainer. Switch today and see just how much you could save at GEICO.com. Go there and get a rate quote or contact a local agent. Meet Stacy. Stacy's on the hunt for a new pair of trendy glasses. Call me picky, but I just can't find the one. Luckily for Stacy, Walmart Vision has virtual try-on. Now she can try on hundreds of frames virtually, then upload her prescription and get new glasses delivered right to her door. Really? (laughs) Yeah, really. Well, the hunt just took a turn for the better. Buy your next pair of glasses with virtual try-on from Walmart. Welcome to Easy Eye Care. Welcome to your Walmart. Restrictions apply. See walmart.com for details. Swimsuit? Check. Sunscreen? Check. Phone charger? Check. Don't forget to pack the 5 Hour Energy. It fits great in a pocket or carry on, and the alert feeling will help you arrive ready for anything. Now get 20% off when you use code 5HE TRAVEL at 5HourEnergy.com. Expires April 30th. One time use only, not valid with other discounts. Remember, visit 5HourEnergy.com and use code 5HE TRAVEL to save 20%. Got to get on the truth. They're going to mandate. Get it on and welcome to CarCast. I'm Adam Kroll. It's Matt, the moderator, DeAndrea, over there. Hello. Uh, I noticed you drove something new in here today, and I was so trained. I saw I saw the car. Yeah. I backed into the parking lot. I said, well, Matt must have drove that. I saw it from... 80 feet away and i said geez man hyundai's really making strides <laughs> i mean right these these korean cars these suvs are getting slicker and better looking and this thing could be a bentley could be an aston martin like I, i'm so trained now to see like a genesis and go god man they look good for right. seventy thousand bucks but 
This was the Aston this Martin. This is the Aston Martin. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I'm sure Genesis loves that. You might have confused the two. Uh, but when you see the front, you know, when you see the front grill, you see the big, like, fish mouth of the... Uh, well, when you get up <laughs> on it, you see where the extra hun- hundred grand... <laughs> yeah, and, and plus... Plus, uh, plus comes into play. But from yeah. a distance, they're all shaping their stuff. What I've been saying for a million years, which is... I get the the Conley leather and uh, all the you know the V the V twelve and all that, but why didn't the cheaper car companies just shape the sheet metal right. so it looked like you know that that's that's not you know there's some cost involved with it, but it's it's nominal. Why not just make it look like the whatever? And now right. it does. As the designer, you look at something gorgeous like ferrari or something and go oh wow yeah but we're kia we can't do that why not yeah (laughs) you know (laughs) i've been i've always always said that there used to be um there's an old commercial that uh chris could find that we probably discussed in the past but this has been around for a while like in the 70s later 70s I think they had this whole Ford Granada campaign and the whole campaign was they'd be at the golf club or the church or something. And somebody would go, there's a uh, Mercedes out there with its lights on. And yeah. everyone would like, look around and, oh, that's my Ford Granada. Oh, you know, mistaken <laughs> yeah, for yeah. a Mercedes. And so they were kind of thinking about it right. like in the 70s. And that's kind of the modern day like Buick campaign, you know, right. like – uh, you know, I'm sitting outside in the Buick, and they're standing where next to it. Like, where is I it? I only see nice modern cars. <laughs> yeah, kind of like that. So this is the this is the Aston Martin DBX 707. DBX 707. So they had a DBX, and oh, wait, it was I like think we have the. Yeah. Sorry, I think we have the commercial. Introducing a new 1978 Ford Granada, the ESS. Can you tell it from this impressive twenty thousand dollar Mercedes 280 SE? <laughs> Actually, yeah. yes, Granada. <laughs> yeah, Mercedes. Granada, Mercedes, Granada, Mercedes, the new Ford Granada ESS. See how close you can come to the look of a $20,000 Mercedes at the price of a Granada. Man, the when front America bumper is back then. Idea, Ford What's that? Wheels. The front bumper is back I then. Know. It added eight inches of length to the thing. Just a $20,000 Mercedes. <laughs> Mercedes, Granada, Mercedes, By the way, they, I, they go, for the price of a Granada, well, we don't exactly know what that price is. I mean, you could tell us. <laughs> yeah, that's true. You could tell us what it is. Um, I'm guessing, what do you want to guess that uh, baseline Granada came in? And what did you say? That was 79? I'm going to, what do you think? Base Granada. Uh, eight grand. I say I think seventy nine. I think less. Okay. I I think it's more like sixty nine or something like that. Chris, can, yeah. Chris can look it up, but um, oh, I was oh my god, I was going to say four something, but when you said eight, I was like, oh, okay, I'm I'm off here. It says four forty one something. Oh, I, that's 40, a, that's not 41. the four door granada or whatever it is. Anyway. Yeah, well, you can find the twenty five percent of the yeah, cost. Yeah, you think it's five grand, <laughs> forty five hundred bucks? Uh, I think it was insanely. What cheap. was the Mercedes? Twenty. Oh, twenty. Yeah. <laughs> so I don't know when today's dollars. It's you know twenty five thousand versus hundred thousand. But anyway, sorry the um, the Aston Martin. The Aston Martin. Yeah, the Aston Martin TBX. It's six hundred ninety seven horsepower. So they did a. Uh, they they did a version the DBX um, and I think it was five hundred. Uh, I don't remember the exact number. Like five five forty two horsepower. I think was the original version. And instead of doing a hotter version in the lineup, they just they just kind of phased one out and brought the new one in the DBX. So it's a four liter V eight twin turbo. It's an AMG sourced engine. It's 697 horsepower, which is the 707 PS. That's where they're getting the, the 707 for it. And, you know, like you'd expect from these hot SUVs. 707 foot-pounds of torque? Is it? 
Uh, no, the the PS, the European rating for it. So uh, uh, they don't do the horsepower the way we do. Oh, You've oh seen okay, that. I got it. Yeah, yeah. the six ninety seven horsepower. Um, Zero to sixty in three point one seconds. I just started driving it. Uh, now I just was driving the Ford F one fifty Lightning, which seemed big, and now this thing seems small. It feels like a sports car that you're driving, or kind of like a like a sports sedan. Mm-hmm. Uh, click through a couple of the different modes. The GT mode is the normal mode. They don't want to call it normal anymore or street or whatever. It's GT. That sounds mm-hmm. better. Mm-hmm. And then you've got a sport and a sport plus mode. And uh, you hear the exhaust open up. You, you hear it start to rumble a little bit more. Um, you, can, uh, you can run it in the automatic or the paddle shifted full manual mode. Uh, and these, it's just funny how these SUVs are just turning into rocket ships. And even around the track, like they're just, it's not just a straight line. Mm-hmm. These things start to haul ass, and it's gorgeous. I mean, it's beautiful. Runs eleven fifties in the quarter mile. Wow, <laughs> at one hundred nineteen miles an hour, it handles well. The seat definitely hugs you a little bit, and the uh, and you can adjust the bolsters to to give it a little squeeze if you want. What's the uh, base? So base price is about two thirty five, two hundred thirty five thousand. Mm-hmm. Um, the one that I'm driving, which uh, you you saw, I think came in at about two ninety five, almost three hundred thousand dollars. But it has the the satin paint and the full carbon fiber, and and you know the floor mats are nineteen hundred bucks, and the carbon fiber trims nine thousand dollars. So it, stuff starts to add up pretty quickly. Um, but you would get the same performance at at, at the base price because it's basically the one engine option. So at two thirty five, is you'd get into that. Now, you know, Aston Martins historically drop off. Is this the kind of thing that you might have someone buy for, you know, two, what did you say? It was two, 219? Two, 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 nine, 295. Two, two, yeah, loaded up with yeah. all the options. Yeah. yeah. So someone may pay high twos for it, and then you may grab it uh, two, three years from now for buck seventy five. So I, I would think so normally, but we're still in this time where used car prices are very high and uh, all right you know because everything is a list everything's waiting 10 months to get it right so Mm -hmm. if somebody had a dbx 707 they put three thousand miles on it can you can you go and sell it and not have a you know not lose a third can you Mm -hmm. not lose a hundred grand i don't know maybe even make a couple bucks i don't know what the wait list on is but this is where we are right now, where everything is is kind of ordered and and you're on a wait list. So we're getting premiums. Well, the dealers are asking right. premiums for for all of these things. So I, you know, normally I would say yes. Um, a lot of these, you know, the Lamborghini Urus, which is a great SUV. This uh, this Aston Martin, you know, RS8. Um, you know, yeah, get one, get one. That's a two year lease return or something, and and. You know, get it for a good price. Lamborghini Urus, and there's a couple of offerings from like AMG, and there's a couple of BMW versions of it, which is an SUV can be a little too tough for me. Meaning the Lambo, the Lambo is like a little too tough for an SUV. The, the design, you're saying? Yeah, like it just yeah. it's it's like the the. Aston Martin's got a little more grace, a little more subtlety, like a little more thinking man's yeah, whatever okay. versus young influencer just made some buku box and wants to go show it off. Yeah. You, yeah. you know what I mean? Like I, I, I like the Lamborghini. AMG would have some stuff too where it's like it's an SUV, but it just sort of looks like a tank rocket or something. Like, <laughs> yeah. like I like. I like the finesse of the Aston okay. Martin. And then though the the Ferrari Pur- Pura Sangue, uh, if I'm getting that name right, look at the design of this. Chris, I'll have to pull up a, a photo. But this is the competitor in this range, right, of of the ultra SUVs. Um, there's the Granada still. The Granada, <laughs> the Granada in 1975 is – can you read that? Coming in at thirty five hundred bucks. With uh, three thousand seven hundred fifty six. Wow. And then the, the Caddy point. DeVille is twelve thousand four hundred seventy nine. So yeah. they're saying it's priced like a VW Rabbit, 
but looks like a Cadillac Seville. What's the rabbit stickering for in 75? 3,800. 3, that was my dad's big ticket item. Wow, he could have got the Granada for $44 less. Oh, look at this, look at this <laughs> ad campaign they did, too. A true story. My parking ticket said Cadillac, but my car is a Ford Granada. Yeah, you don't have to pay that ticket. Yeah. <laughs> That's what yeah. that means. So there was a lot of mistaking. I mean, this uh, this is 1975. So what I'm saying yeah. is, is it's not a new phenomenon that car manufacturers are kind of going, hey, yeah. we're like that other car, but it's so yeah. much more. You know? I- it's funny because we kind of missed the ads from back then. The parking ticket thing with the old lady, that's funny. That's good. That's funny, right? Like, I got a parking ticket. And like, in L.A., like, that would be the ad you'd want to run. Yeah, I, I don't uh, – <laughs> yeah, we're looking at the new Ferrari SUV. All right. Um, it's gorgeous. Shall we yeah. – maybe I'll hit a spot and we'll bring Ryan in cool. from uh, Velocity. Uh, let me tell you about better help. Better help. Uh, now, a word from our sponsor, Better Help. Training your brain to stay in problem solving mode when faced with challenges is tough. A therapist can help you become a better problem solver. Yeah, buddy, you got to get got to get the bean in order up there. Take care of the rest of the uh, problems life throws at you. BetterHelp, convenient, accessible, affordable, and entirely online. Get matched with one of 25,000 therapists after filling out a brief survey. And you can switch therapists anytime. When you want to be a better problem solver, therapy can get you there. Visit BetterHelp.com slash CarCast today for 10% off your first month. That's better, H-E-L-P, BetterHelp.com slash CarCast. Ryan Turry is in studio he is the general manager of Velocity International. Invitational. Oh, sorry, Invitational. Yes. Oh, Matt says International on here. That's my bad then. No, oh, okay. Oh, up at the top, yeah. Up at the top. Uh, <laughs> I get him confused. That's and right. uh, I thought it may have been Velocity International who puts on the Velocity, <laughs> Velocity I- I- Invitational. It actually is, yeah. That's, we made uh, it as confusing as possible. <laughs> So you, uh, this event's going on at WeatherTech, uh, Laguna mm-hmm. Seca, October 14th through the 16th. I shall be there and my different drummer, 510. And um, what, is the, what is the notion behind Velocity? What was the plan? What is it sort of based on? Yeah, yeah. No, thank you for having me. Um, good morning. Uh, the, the, the plan and I guess the, the basis is trying to take – um, kind of the best of several events around the world, you know, looking at Goodwood, who obviously does it the best, um, Le Mans Classic, uh, even events like the Quail, um, where, you know, you go, it's it's quite fun just to be there. You mm-hmm. have kind of a people-watching experience, that sort of thing, um, you know, on the spectator side. So we're trying to create something that is spectator-friendly and, and focused for, you know, families and really anybody who has – any desire to see cars, that likes cars. Um, But, you know, on the other side of that, we're trying to make something that is very enjoyable for the racer as well. Uh, So we've got 10 race groups, um, and they all are basically a a period of time. So I I know that the the group that you're in is a lot of 510s, Alpha GTAs, that sort of stuff. And and when you look at that, and, and what we're trying to show the spectators is, this is what it would have looked like, you know, Pick, mm-hmm. a, pick a, a time period, 1972, B and C sedan. Uh, this is what it would have looked like. So you can kind of go back to that era and get a good picture of what this is all about. And the the hope is trying to show those uh, you know unique periods that it allows people to learn about some of this stuff and and you know shows why this is so important to you know car history and racing and. And why racers like us love this stuff. Well, you know, I had been to Goodwood. We've been to Goodwood, you know, several times, participated several times. And But sometimes you got to bring a, a greenhorn over there who's not really a car guy to, <laughs> to sort of experience. And I, I brought uh, Mike. We brought Mike August yeah. once or twice, I think, over there. Uh, yeah. He's a comedy guy. He's a Hollywood guy. And he'd be like walking around, going, "We need something like this." 
in the, in, in the United States. Like, why yeah. isn't there something like this? I think we're at the festival speed with that one, but also the historics – or not the historics, the um, – The revival. The revival. So just through the eyes of a guy who's not a car guy, but he's an entertainment guy, he's sort of like, why don't we have our the, own? The you spectators, know, the, the whole presentation, what's going on? He's, he, you know, he sees it as, why couldn't this be he an sees event it in the as U.S.? A, he sees it as a promoter like of events, not as a car guy. <laughs> yeah. you know? And uh, this is several years ago, but – I've, you know, we we talked about it. We're like, yeah, why isn't why aren't we trying to craft something here stateside that is something of this quality or ilk? Yeah, yeah. No, I think it, it's a bit of a challenge to try to get you know everything together and to try to make it pretty and try to you know create something that people enjoy and want to go to. Goodwood obviously does it the best, um, but I think that there's a lot you know the car culture, especially in California, I think will support it. You know, there's a lot of folks who love cars and racing. Um, so, you know, we're trying to bring together stuff um, all the way from, you know, 1910 to almost current. Uh, so that if you like cars, there's something for you to see. There's something for everyone to see, really. Um, we've got a cool partnership with McLaren Formula One. So they're bringing, I think, seven Formula One cars, you know, obviously with the Netflix series. Uh, all that stuff's been so popular. Yeah. So, um you know, people who want to see those sorts of things, and they'll, they'll bring, I think, a couple um, Senna and Prost era cars that you know you never see run. Right. Um, Mario Andretti is going to drive a uh, 2014 McLaren Formula One car. Wow. Uh, which should be pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. We're excited about that. Uh, Tanner Faust is going to drive the uh, F1 GTR, a, a Golf livery. Oh, uh, really? Yeah. From the nineties or in- yeah, uh, ninety six. Um, I think it was the uh, the British Championship car. Yeah, I, I can picture the golf liveried. Um, yeah, I can I can picture that car. I I I thought it was even earlier than that, but it's ninety six, huh? Uh, I the car maybe ninety five, but I think it won the um, British Championship in ninety six. Mm. I think they ran it up the hill at Goodwood this year. Mm. Uh, as well okay well it'd be great to see tanner out there and uh mario as well though i'm not i wouldn't i'm i know mario but i wouldn't say i'm friends with him (laughs) like i would say with tanner faust yeah um so and then in terms of the experience for the spectator we've been to a million of these events all over the world uh what is different about this or what are you trying to usher in yeah so, um, you know, most of these racetracks you go to are, are kind of dust bowls typically, and I think it makes it hard for people to go there and have a nice time. So um, the first thing we do is all the cars in, in all the race groups are tented so that they're really on display for people to walk around and they can look at a group and say, oh, you know, these are the cars. Um, they all have uh, placards with history in front of them so that people can read about them. So it becomes more of like a rolling museum mm-hmm. people can kind of yeah, see okay. and hear. Um, so that's the first thing that the cars are really, um, you know, foremost in everyone's, uh, vision and they can see and and learn about them easily. Uh, we also, it sounds kind of funny, but we bring in a bunch of AstroTurf that, um, we reuse every year. We don't throw it away. Um, but it ends up making the place feel a lot more cozy and a lot more welcoming. It actually cuts down on a bunch of the dust and ugly stuff that, you know, when you go to a racetrack, it's usually just hot and um, kind of annoying. So all that stuff ends up being taken care of with AstroTurf, places to sit, umbrellas. Um, we've got a bunch of different food vendors, I think like 12 food vendors, um, spirits vendors, um, some, you know, wine tasting, beer tasting. Uh, so really, if you want to be able to come, get good food, good drink, hang out, watch the cars, watch people, um, it's a really inviting atmosphere for that. Yeah, so, you know, these things are big asphalt parking lots, right. and then they set up the hot dog stand, and the other guy selling Gatorade over here, and it's like, it's 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 a little uh, lo-fi. <laughs> I <laughs> yeah. mean, it's, it's fine, but it's got a little more NASCAR to it than European sort of vibe, and, and yeah. when you go to Goodwood, 
They've got the spirits. They've got the wine. They've got the higher end food. They got the vendors selling expensive, you know, leather jackets and stuff like that. It's just another right. There's champagne flutes and yeah, yes, you it's know. just a, it's it's different. And I think people, I mean, judging from you know the the waiting list to buy tickets to the Quail every year, I think people definitely want that experience. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, we think so too, and. You know, we don't want to be exclusive. So the quail, you know, it sells out, and the tickets I think are nine hundred dollars. We have day passes that start at eighty five dollars. Mm-hmm. So, um, you know, most people, I think, you know, if they save or whatever, can can go to that. It's not this super exclusive deal where you can't get in, you can't get a ticket. What kind of attendance do you expect? Uh, we hope for about sixteen to seventeen thousand people over the weekend. It's a three day event: Friday, Saturday, Sunday. How what? year is this for you guys this is our third event uh the first event was in sonoma in 19 it was called sonoma speed festival Mm -hmm. and then with covid and all that we ended up moving it to uh, laguna last year in november uh we rebranded changed the name to velocity and so that was our our first event post covid and this will be really our second uh event so the Laguna. Rolex Historics uh, during Car Week, they mm-hmm. they cap the cars. I, I think around five fifty. The, the racing like cars around there. Yeah. Um, how many cars are you guys expecting? Do you have a cap, or, or right now is it still growing? Um, no, we we closed our entries um, in June, okay. so uh, we'll have about two hundred and seventy cars. So it's about half the cars of Rolex, but we try to be pretty um exclusive on the cars we want to just get really good cars good drivers we want it to be safe for everyone um the the rolex is a little bit different they'll take you know 40 to 50 cars in a group and we don't believe in that so we're upwards of 25 to 30 but 30 is kind of our max per group just because we think it's safer um you know looking at all the events that uh, we've looked at and talking with um we've got some really great people on the race management side of things we really want to keep it safe because uh, people are bringing great cars and, mm-hmm. you know, they don't want to do that in a, in a dangerous environment. So uh, we're happy to, you know, let people race and, and let them really run these cars. But we want to do it as safely as possible. And there isn't a particular theme like with Rolex does or even what Goodwood uh, does. You know, they celebrate 75 years of IMSA. A, a, yeah, or, or Porsche or something like that, right? Right, right. We don't have a, a featured mark per se. Um, what we like to do, what we call them internally, are, are featurettes. So um, we have a bunch of different featurettes. So we're doing uh, the the group that you're in, Adam, is the uh, the BNC sedan group. We're doing a 50 years of uh, BNC sedan. So we'll have um, John Morton and Peter Brock will be there, you know, signing autographs, and we'll have a, a cool display with five or six cars. Plus, we'll have the race group. So that. The display with, with those guys and them signing autographs will be one of the featurettes. Um, we're doing a little featurette with you know McLaren Ultimate Series cars. So I think we've got a dozen Ultimate Series cars that will be there on display. What is the um, – just for selfish purposes, uh-huh. <laughs> um, you know, uh, the historics, uh, Rolex historics, they, you know, they used to go, I don't know – one day, then you know the race day would be two two sessions, and they 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 mix it up a little bit this year. I think they just want one one on Thursday, one on Friday, one, or one on Wednesday. Jeez, I can't remember. Anyway, they broke it up. Um, mm-hmm. So yeah, what is the schedule? Will people do more than one session in a day? Well, how long are the sessions? Yeah, so. Um this year is a little bit different than last year, but this year is a three-day. Last year was a four-day event. Um, this year will be two sessions on Friday and then a race each Saturday and Sunday. So um, it's not an incredible amount of track time. It's a reasonable amount of track time. A lot of the folks who— 20-minute sessions? Or? They're 20-minute uh, sessions on Friday, um, and then the races are 25 minutes okay. Saturday, Sunday. Okay. Yeah. So it'll be it'll be— I wonder what my run group's going on. You know when my run group's going? I don't going? know what the schedule I, is, but if you're out twice Friday and then a Saturday and a Sunday. Uh, yeah, is it Saturday and Sunday or is it Saturday or Sunday? Saturday and Sunday. Yeah, so oh, you're okay. out four times. You're out four times over the three days. Oh, so you do two on Friday, one on Saturday, one, one on, on Sunday. Sunday. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. And uh, we we need to leave some time Saturday and Sunday 
for the the demos and exhibitions, like the mm-hmm. the Formula One cars, the McLaren GTR. Right. Um, we've got some cool rally cars coming from Dirtfish that they want to run with uh, Alistar McRae, who was mm-hmm. Colin McRae's brother, which is wow. really that'll be exciting. Um, you don't see those cars very often, so uh, the premise is to allow people and, and you know racers as well because you know we don't see some of this stuff run that a lot of the racers want to be able to watch the rally cars, the Formula One cars, that sort of thing mm-hmm. uh, run on Saturday and Sunday. They, they don't run on Friday. So, um, I, you know, I imagine it's about time. You know, I mean, we all know Goodwood and when we're talked about all these events, but, you know, they, they've they started many, many years ago and there were, there weren't, there was not much to see probably in the first infancy of a lot of these events. we got, you know, even maybe even Ren Sport or Luft Cult or something like that. Like they, they really have grown, mm-hmm. you know. So it's like the question is, is you don't want to take 20 years to get to a certain place, but <laughs> right. you can't do it in two years. It's just it's undoable. You have to you have to build to it. So, you know, what what's the goal? The goal, um, you know, one of the goals is to get it to, to at least break even, pay for itself. So we need to get uh, <laughs> yeah. some, some spectators there uh, to do that and, and some sponsors. And we've been fortunate that the sponsors are coming on and, and they're pretty excited. Um, I think it's it's a different event. You know, they get to get some track time so they can actually show their car off on mm-hmm. track and people can see and hear it go. Yeah. Uh, which is cool. Um but yeah, we think that it will take three to five years, and and you know obviously COVID uh, put a little break in that, so that's a, a right. challenge. But you know, one of the things we we said about the the festival of speed being the hill climb is the revival is cool because you, I mean, you get to see the the vintage cars and these guys dress up and they just go at it like every one of those cars isn't worth anything <laughs> and they're really worth mm-hmm. everything. But the the hill climb does allow manufacturers and stuff to come out, even debut cars, but debut cars not just, you know, on in in the concept circle at Pebble Beach, but like actually run it up the hill or fire it up and move it around. So I think those types of events are are interesting from a spectator standpoint, but also from the sponsor standpoint. You know, totally. if you get you know, the crazy McLaren, I forgot the name of Solus, I think, the the McLaren supercar that they sort of reverse engineer from the video game. Oh, right, yeah. Like Very that cool. we saw uh, at at, uh, at Pebble this year. I think you give McLaren an opportunity to run that thing around the track, you know, totally. a couple of laps. I think they would, they'd be down for that, and we'd love to see that. One of the things that we did in Monterey was be able to, to speak with uh, Gordon Murray about his T50, but then get to see and hear Dario Franchini run the T50 around the track at 12,000 mm-hmm. RPM. Yeah. It, it sounds insane. And that's really what you want is to be able to see that thing go around. Totally. I mean, especially if Dario is driving it. But yeah. Totally. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that, you know, a lot of us, this all started by seeing and hearing these cars in one fashion or another, mm-hmm. whether it was on a racetrack or on the street. Um, but it's we believe anyway that it's hard to kind of fall in love with all this stuff if it's sitting stationary in a museum. Right. You know, so being able to see it and hear it, as you're saying. Yeah, that's a different experience. We can go to the Peterson Museum, which we love. We go all the time. But totally. it's, it's a different experience than, totally. than going to the track. You're at the track, and like you said, you're walking around, you're outside, you're on the big tarmac there. Yeah, you want to fire some things up. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. No, we think so. And, you know, I think that, the, like I was saying before, the car culture um, – is alive and well. You know, you look at people buying McLarens and Lamborghinis and Ferraris and all that stuff, and there's no shortage of buyers, but getting them interested in motorsports and some older cars mm-hmm. is a little more challenging. Um, but we think that allowing those people to see and hear those cars run is one way to get them kind of hooked. Yeah. And that's what we need as a spectator uh, you're, as well. You're going to be out there in your Shelby, 1967 Shelby. It's just a Shelby here. Mustang? Oh, or? oh it, in, the, uh, in the historic Trans Am uh, group. Oh, okay. Yeah, I I will not be out there. Uh, unfortunately, we went to Lime Rock um, to to run at the uh, historics there over Labor Day, and uh, it dropped a valve. So I don't think we're going to be able to get it. You went together. out to Lime Rock. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's, that's a long way to go. It is. Have you been though? It's a great event. Yeah. No, we've it's, been. I've been to Lime Rock um, to films. Uh, Sam Posey. Okay. Actually. 
about a Newman doc, and then I ended up doing the autocross thing in a M three up, yeah. up, up top. Okay, uh, the Lime Rock edition, I think, of uh, the M three, maybe four. I can't remember. Anyway, so. Uh, technically, I have driven at Lime Rock, okay, but on the autocross, not- whatever, because uh, it was a long story. But uh, we just had a car come back from Lime Rock, right? A, a Newman yeah. Oldsmobile uh, Cutlass, Life event, yeah. uh, Trans Am. Oh, really? Trans Am Cutlass, um, oh, cool. Peerless chassis yeah. car. Um, you, you can fix that motor. You got three weeks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's, or or a month or whatever. It is. I know, yeah, I know. Fine. Yeah, no, it's yeah. it's just getting back now. So is uh, it a what is it? It's a fat, it's fat. one of the uh, Shelby Group Two cars. So in '67 they built uh, 26 cars for Trans Am racing. You know that was kind of the start of of the heyday of Trans Am uh, with all the big bore cars. And um, and so that car was left over in '67 and then sold in '68 and they ran it in Trans Am '68 and '69. Um, so pretty, you know fun stuff to run that that group is uh you know it's all trans am cars that had to run in period yeah um, that's that's always a crowd pleaser mm-hmm. and it's um it's it's probably the purest example of of a run group where everything is sort of of the era within a couple of years you know short period of time yes you know a lot of the times they go imza and this and that and and this group and that group and that group from 1972 to 1984 and you see a lot of different looking stuff out there but that historic trans am group is super familiar super nostalgic and then because the window is only three years, maybe, or you know, yeah, sixty-eight to seventy-one, or something. Right, something's a small window, and it's everything's everyone's the tires are the same, the power's about the same, and everything's about the same. So it's the, it it has the most parity mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. in it of of all the groups, which you, I like. You've run your car at Rolex as well. I did. I didn't run this year, uh, but I ran it last year. What What's the livery on it? What does it look like? I'm trying to see if I can remember it. It's. Uh, it's a it's a white um, and it's a notchback uh, sixty seven okay. and it says code key on the side. It was uh, it was owned by a guy up in Walnut Creek actually who had a um, business called Code Key Electronics and they made speedometers and tachometers for big diesel applications like Greyhound bus mm-hmm. because they, they there was no. He's uh, like now I want to go racing. <laughs> yeah, and so yeah. I think that was like a tax write off for him. He never even drove the car. He always had somebody else drive it. Um, but it's cool. I have all the stuff back to to when Shelby uh, got the car. Is a pardon me. This could sound a little insulting, but the, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, everyone sure. likes the fastbacks more than the notchbacks. Yeah, mm-hmm. and the fastbacks obviously are the more famous of the Shelby Shelby cars. But the notchbacks, there is no reason why the notchbacks couldn't beat. The fastbacks it's probably but, lighter, uh, but I do I do seem to see the fastbacks more toward the front and the notchbacks <laughs> a little more in the middle. And I always think to myself, are we talking arrow here, or did the cars not get developed developed as much? And I'm, I'm sure there's some notchbacks with some amazing history. But what I'm saying is, is normally I see the fastback. Yeah, well, I think uh, in, in that group anyway, the fastback is the Boss 302. Mm-hmm. Uh, which is a little bit later. Oh, you got the 60. 289? Yeah. Well, my car's a 302, but um, but the boss heads flow really well. And by 69, the cars had gotten faster. Um, right. They're a little heavier, but they're just more more well-developed. Yeah. Um, and then the earlier cars, you couldn't have, the way that the homologation went, you couldn't have a 67 fastback in Trans Am. It was homologated for SCCA B production, right? And so they needed another car to to homologate, you know, for for FIA and for legal reasons into Trans Am. So they qualified the notchback as a different car, a separate car, mm-hmm. which is why you see all the early cars in that group are notchbacks. And then the Boss three hundred two was a separate car from a Mustang in sixty nine, um, and those are all the fastbacks, and they are. Oh, that's right, the Shelby. Fastbacks are B production. Are B production, and yeah. And the boss the, is the is the Trans Am is the separate, version. Yeah. yeah, you're right. Yeah, I yeah. Forgot about yeah. it. Yeah, so it's kind of weird that, you know, they're all Mustangs, but just for the FIA rules, 
Mm-hmm. They had to have a, sep- a whole separate car to homologate them. Uh, Porsche, we know that's a business of yours, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, mostly restoring and kind of hot rotting uh, old air cooled stuff. What's. Uh, yeah, so there's a lot going on with that. I mean, I guess it's we, incredible. We thank Singer for that, but then there's the Outlaw stuff, and now right. there's the new 993 stuff. Is that what we're trying to think and, of? And it's just uh, it, like Gunther works, like the yeah, modern Gunther stuff, works, and then like, you know Singer now during the during the Turbo stuff. But just it seems like I, I don't know if I want to say Porsche has exploded the last handful of years, but it, feels like it. it kind of feels like it has. Yeah. And maybe that's just because more events and things started becoming bigger around that community, like Luft Cult and mm-hmm. stuff. And then, you know, Porsche doing a pretty good job with some of the specialty uh, new releases of cars that they've had. Totally. I think has really kind of contributed to it as well. So, yeah, it's just Porsche's going nuts. It really is, yeah. I think they speak well to their heritage, you know. They always do something, whether it's a throwback paint scheme or – you know, the restoring something that's old at the museum and then or at the factory and then auctioning it off for charity, that sort of the stuff. The modern day nine thirty five that they brought out a few years ago. Yeah. Sort of the track only version of that car and now those are trading for crazy money. Totally. Yeah. Yeah. yeah uh, one uh, Chris can look it up. There was a nine thirty five, a modern day nine thirty five that went off over Monterey that yeah. was estimated to be, I don't know, one one to one three or something. I don't know what it what it hammered for. But um yeah, well the thing about Porsche is is they were into their heritage, you know, sort of even before they had a heritage, which is the shape of the car. You know, they've <laughs> they've always kind of went, This is who we are. Yeah, good point. We want people to know this is a Porsche, not a Granada. Not a Granada. <laughs> it's a Porsche. <laughs> and and so they they had that mindset like all the way through, you know, rear engine air cooled with some exceptions, you know, 924s and 944s and 928s and things like that. But they always kind of they were always connected to their to their heritage, you know, mm-hmm. and now they have a real history and they're keeping that alive through yeah th- all these different events and all these different yeah. things yeah. but Red sports cool but they've always totally. you know they've always you know I don't think there's any other company that you could say where this is our car this is our shape this is our architecture and there'll be modifications but you're going to know what it is by just seeing an a silhouette Right. Of the outline right. of the yeah. car. You'll know what it is from, you know, 1966 to to today. You'll know what it is. Yeah. And it's always funny because when we go to the gas station, and there's this screen up there and they have to do the, the no name brand car. But you see the little uh, outline right. of, of the right. Porsche up there. Yeah. And you're like, why are you picking the one car <laughs> that we all know is right. like probably trademarked that shape, right? You can't. <laughs> You can't use that shape. You could have put anything else up there. What? Yeah, so this is the, the black. The new 935, which yeah. is um, cool. And I, and I actually think they're a little undervalued at a million bucks. I think you buy that car and sit on it. The estimate was 1-1 one, one to 1-1. One, one, sorry, 1-1-4. One one, and it went for 1-4-6. So hmm. it, it went for more than the high end. Estimate, and I, I still think you get that car. That's that's a really good buy. Um, it's, but this isn't very old. I I don't recall how much these were when they were coming out. Or you know, I know they were pretty limited and had to be on the list. But were they a million bucks? I don't even know if they yeah, were a million I, I think bucks. They were, I think they're about a million bucks. Yeah, yeah. and I, they the, uh, made it. It's weird that seven or ninety. So you're making yeah. what a hundred grand a year on this thing yeah. so far. <laughs> they, they, the thing that's funny about them is they chose the Interscope livery, yeah, which is essentially the livery on this nine thirty five is very reminiscent of the Interscope mm-hmm. car livery nine thirty five from back in you know seventy nine eighty. Yeah. Which I don't know how conscious that was, or like, what do you guys think the? If you can find Chris the nineteen seventy nine nine thirty five Interscope, 
um, you, you'll go, oh, it's kind of the same scheme uh, color-wise. Yeah, that's intentional. It's intentional? Of course, because, yeah, I mean, go. look at all the work they've put into this car. I, yeah. They, they didn't I, accidentally come up with the Interscope. But, the, yeah, it, but I see what you're saying. Like, but wow. the Interscope isn't the most it's, iconic it's 935. Not, right. It not, looks cool. Mm-hmm. Maybe maybe it was the only one they can get the copyright to. <laughs> maybe yeah. everybody else wanted money. So this is not a coincidence. <laughs> this is not a coincidence. It can't be. <laughs> I mean, how would it? Why? So the question I, would be: I, I Why did they? I pick would have thought a little more Martini, right. a little more uh, Moby Dicky. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that's even a word. It is now, <laughs> Dick ass. Uh, you know, white with like again a, a little more or uh, or. Um, Oh, uh, God, uh, Peter Gregg and... Uh, yeah, Brumos. 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 Like, I thought it was a little yeah. martini, a little Brumos, yeah, you know, a little white with a little brumos right. in there. The black... Well, they weren't... I don't think they were all of this. I think way. they were. Because they showed the white one when they debuted it at Ren Sport. I don't know if oh, it had... Oh, did the... we see it? Uh, yeah. We went to Ren Sport and saw that, right? Yeah, we. Was I, that? Think, I, I think thought we it was filmed black. them for Going Racing. Mm. I, I think there was... Oh, it was a white one? Uh, I, I believe it was a white one. I don't think they were all black. That's well, a good now question. Chris can look because I, I think that's what they were. <laughs> did, they, did they do a white 935, a modern day 935, or Ren Sport 935 debut? Maybe that's what you want to. You look for that. Let me hit uh, upside over here. Cringing at the pump, trying to figure out what the silhouette of that car is. Get uh, get eye popping checks at the restaurant. Inflation is hitting everyone, and that's why I started using Upside. It's an app for anyone who buys gas, groceries, or dines out, and that's all of us with every purchase. Get started. Download the free Upside app. Use promo code CARCAST for five bucks or more cash back on your first purchase of ten bucks or more. Claim an offer for whatever you're buying on upside uh, check in at the business pay as usual with a credit card or debit card and earn three times more cash back than credit card rewards 4.8 star rating by the way on the on the app store it is upside right matt yeah you know download the free upside app and use promo code carcast to get five dollars or more cash back on your first purchase of ten dollars or more that's five dollars or more cash back on your first purchase of ten dollars or more use promo code carcast well i stand corrected so there is kind of a brumos yeah, uh martini. martini kind of a martini yeah, white yeah. so so they oh i can see the that's colors kind of on moby it, yeah. dicky as yeah a little yeah, moby, moby dicky dickish <laughs> moby dickish <laughs> yeah so uh so i and and, and then it kind of begs the question of did they there just go. go we're gonna do this car and all our famous liveries right yeah they've done that before with that cayman interseries and yeah so uh, there you go. Yeah, so this I is a cool car. Corrected. And if it was a million bucks, you're, you've you've already done like a hundred grand a year on this thing. All right, uh, let cool. me throw a plug out for Ryan Velocity Invitational, and uh, I'm going to be there. Matt's going to be there. Yep. WeatherTech Raceway, Laguna Seca, October 14th through the 16th. Tickets and packages available at VelocityInvitational.com. You just come by. And say hi. Well, we hang can, out. We love you, talking to car can people. Can you get tickets at the door, or should you get them in advance? You can get them at the door. Yeah, it's a little quicker to get them in advance, okay. and they will go up a little bit, about ten percent on the day of. So it's okay. a little cheaper to buy yeah. them online. So get, right. them, get, get them. Get them. Get them in advance. And yeah. uh, again, say hi. Uh, Hollywood Improv, October nineteenth. That'll be me doing stand up there with friends. We'll do a live pod. You just go to amcurl dot com for everything you need, and my new book, Everything Reminds Me of Something, is available. As we speak, um, what do you got, Matt? I went down to HRE Wheels and they digitally scanned the the truck. And uh, so I posted that up on social media. You can see how they do that. It's really cool stuff. So until next time, it's Adam Carroll for Ryan Turry and uh, Matt, the motorator, DeAndrea, saying keep the air in the spare and the bag in the wheel. For the latest updates and call-in times, follow the show on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at CarCast Show. If you'd like to write in, fill out the form on CarCastShow.com. And don't forget to give us a nice rating on iTunes. CarCast is a Corolla digital production and is produced by Chris Loxamana. 
For more information, visit carcastshow.com. love to save some money on your insurance. Of course you would. And who doesn't love a deal when it comes to great rates on insurance for everything? Geico can help insurance for your car, truck, motorcycle, boat, RV, even your homeowners, condo or renters insurance. They are all covered with Geico. Save even more with special discounts when you bundle coverages together. Plus, they have an easy to use Geico mobile app and 24 seven roadside assistance. So it's easy to switch to GEICO. It's a no-brainer. Switch today and see just how much you could save at GEICO.com. Go there and get a rate quote or contact a local agent. All this month, celebrate Hispanic Heritage Month with Pluto TV. Watch movies with the biggest stars like Eugenio Derbez in No Eres Tu, Soy Yo and Luis Gerardo Mendez in Camino a Marte. Plus, Pluto TV has thousands more movies and TV shows and over 45 channels in Spanish, all for free. So download the Pluto TV app on all your favorite devices and start streaming today. Pluto TV. Drop in. Watch free. Meet Stacy. Stacy's on the hunt for a new pair of trendy glasses. Call me picky, but I just can't find the one. Luckily for Stacy, Walmart Vision has virtual try-on. Now she can try on hundreds of frames virtually, then upload her prescription and get new glasses delivered right to her door. Really? <laughs> yeah, really. Well, the hunt just took a turn for the better. Buy your next pair of glasses with virtual try-on from Walmart. Welcome to Easy Eye Care. Welcome to your Walmart. Restrictions apply. See walmart.com for details.